Hey all, Adam here. And there's you. And we've got some TPF in the raw here. No intro song, no bumper music, no Andrew's News, no Ride of the Week, Tip of the Week, any of that. This is a special series of episodes that we're going to have. And it's an idea that I've had for a while. And it's really good that we're finally getting these out on the site because I'm really interested in this idea. And our series here, These Enthusiasts Really Love Their Coasters, is going to focus on different people who love to marathon ride. And the original one that we know about, of course, is who? Main Street Henry? Exactly. And that's the only one I really knew of. And then over the last two years, as we started adding a lot of people from the enthusiast community, we've realized that there are a lot of other people who like to marathon rides, right, bud? Yeah. And so what coaster would you say you've done the most out of any? A Toro. Could you guess how many times you've done it? No. No, maybe in the high double digits, maybe something like 60, 70, 80, somewhere in there. Nah, more, almost like 100 something. It, oh, okay, so before you couldn't guess, but now you say 100 something, so. I know it's way more than 60. You feel like you know El Toro pretty well, right, after yeah. all these years? And so imagining you not doing that 60, but 1600 or 2600 or 3600, do you think you could ride a single ride that many times? It depends. Well, is that still your number one coaster, El Toro? Probably. Okay, so it still is. And so that kind of intrigued us as to the reason why people marathon coasters, what experience experiences they have. Does it get dull? What is the background story? And that is the purpose for this series. And so we started off with Brianna, our friend from Hershey Park that we've been friends online for a while. And we actually did meet at one of the Hershey Park Media Days for the announcement for their Water Park editions from a couple years ago. And we know that she loves riding a particular coaster. And for our first guest, we thought good to go with someone we know. And so we talked to Brianna about her love of her coaster, how she got into the whole hobby of loving coasters, and talked about the whole experience. And I think we found out some interesting things. So you ready to take a listen? Yeah, sure. Let's listen. So it is a pleasure to have Brianna Simpkins with us. Thanks so much for giving us some of your time. No problem. Well, we met about, I don't know, something like a year and a half ago in person for the announcement at Hershey Park for their Water Park editions, as we were both representing Coaster Addict at the time. Just wondering, before we get to some of your history, how did you get involved with Dwayne and Coaster Addict? Um, I got involved actually purely by chance. They were asking for, you know, a graphic designer to show up, and I just happened to be, it was one of those circumstances where you gotta be in the right place at the right time. And I just so happened to be there, and I was like, hey, here, I'm right here, sign me up. Because if I wanna go to theme parks and do what I love, with what I love, with what I learn, and have fun doing it, hey, by all means. So that's pretty much the backstory of how I got involved. And that's perfect, because that's, as you said, that's what it's all about. The having fun doing it is just so exactly. huge. Take us through your history of theme parks and how you got hooked. All right, so it all starts way back when, I believe back in the year of 2003. Oh my gosh, ancient history. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> it starts way back in 2003. I was just barely tall enough to ride Mean Streak at Theater Point, which just so happens to be my very first roller coaster ever. Wow. I remember it clearly. It was nice and sunny. I was scared out of my mind because my cousin was with me and she was like, hey, you're gonna go on this, you're gonna go on your first roller coaster today. Today. And I don't care what it takes. You're gonna get bribed. You're gonna get, you know, you're gonna get on one. Because you gotta get over your fear because believe it or not, I used to be terrified of roller coasters like I would cry <laughs> I can believe I'd it sell them. <laughs> but um, somebody eventually got to face your fears at some point so I got bribed with chocolate ice cream believe it or not that's oh, what we do know. with Alex sometimes <laughs> that is so <laughs> funny that's what we do yeah let's see it chocolate ice cream that works it's, it's just, don't even give me money just give me ice cream brilliant and that's <laughs> quite a first coaster mean streak of all coasters to do as your first one that was your first I know <laughs> Um, and we rode in the front because I wasn't having the back seat. I wanted to ride in the back. I wasn't having it anything. I wanted to see where I was going because I, I thought that if I could see where I was going, it wouldn't be that bad because your mind can kind of prepare you for what's coming up. And uh, so if you look a little further ahead, you can see, oh, there's a turn there. Okay, well, okay, I'm just going to do this with my body, etc. So, you know, I got on, I rode it. 
I didn't get off for the rest of the day. So didn't even wind up trying any of the other coasters at the park? I did get on Millennium Force. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that was my second ever coaster. That's a pretty crazy one-two punch for your first ever coasters. I know. I'm like, what was into me that day? I don't know. But that's the only reason why I remember it was this Mean Street and Millennium Forest. Two M's for one Monday. Which, uh, you know, those are my first two. Back Way back to that three, I don't even remember what day of the week it was. I know it was Monday because I remember three M's make me happy. So wow. that, that's, that's the only way I remember it. Well, and then, then what was last year like for you with Mean Street getting turned into Steel Vengeance? Was that kind of a, an emotional experience, having your first coaster taken away, but supposedly one of the best coasters in the world added? Right, yeah. It was very hard for me. I was there. I was literally crying the entire time through the whole funeral process and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Um, I literally had to be carried out of the park. <laughs> Um, because it was like seeing all those memories kind of get memorialized in such a way, but I'm just glad they didn't tear the whole thing down. To be completely honest, I mean, I would have been devastated. I wasn't as sad as I thought it would be because Cedar Point did keep sort of the skeleton of the ride there, yep. so some of the ride is still present, but it's not like the same ride experience. It's better. So for me personally... I believe that they gave, you know, the roller coaster a second chance. Instead of completely leveling it and yeah. starting new, they gave it a second chance at life. They gave it a second lease on life. That's for a me good personally, way to which put is it. Why I, uh, which is why I was kind of like, I got over a little faster than I thought. Yeah, I'd say, as Andrew said, yeah, very positive outlook as you could look at it in a negative light, but it will be there for at least a couple more decades, so that is a good thing. It will, yeah, it will. <laughs> so now leading into your home park, as you uh, can let us know what that is, as a lot of people do already know that, and then from there, just head into what is your coaster love, the coaster that has your heart. Mm. So, yep. My home park's Hershey Park. Yeah, everybody knows that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, my first trip to Hershey Park actually also contained my third uh, roller coaster, which just so happens to be the one I'm about to talk about later. I remember first going to that park back in tail end of 2003 to going into 2004. Okay, in that same time and, period. Uh, mm -hmm. the extent, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So basically, you can say my theme park career started in 2003, so yeah. you can just say that for right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, the first time I went, it was kind of more of like, I went with my family, you know, just to see what it was like. I remember my mom telling me, hey, you don't have to go on anything because I know that you're just getting into it. My aunt was there. She's a big coaster enthusiast, and I'm going to get more into that later because she has plays a big part in why I ride. Okay. And... Um, then, you know, my brother was there, so we were kind of more like the the park tourists, almost, where we go to the park just to see what it's all about, you know, so it gets you a feel of, you know, how the park atmosphere is. And Hershey does a really good job of keeping up the classic park atmosphere, as well as having a really strong backbone of some really incredible coasters, in my Agreed. opinion, that they do so well. They keep them in such top shape that it's absolutely phenomenal. Like, you know, they still have the chaser lights on their wooden roller coasters, which some theme parks don't have anymore. Right. Um, Classic. They just have floodlights. Classic look, exactly. Ex ex right, exactly. So. And, and as you so said, right, adding to that, right. like you say, Comet is riding like it's a five-year-old coaster. I've exactly. It's amazing how well taken care of. And how old is that now? Is that like fifty somewhere around that? Fifty years old? I think it's somewhere around that. And and it rides beautifully. Exactly. Point exactly. Yeah. Yep. 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 It, it rides like it's five years old. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head with that one right there. I couldn't have explained it better myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it rides like it's five. <laughs> yep, it's brilliant. Exactly. So I mean. That was my first experience with it, and mm -hmm. then my love for Hershey Park has kind of grown ever since. I went 
I actually counted how many times I went last year. I ran my season pass into the ground. I went 65 times last year. Oh my gosh, to one park 65 times. That's to amazing. To one park 65 times. Okay. Yeah. That is some great value for your money right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I go for the smells sometimes mm -hmm. because, oh my goodness, you go in there and the first thing it hits you is like that smell of kettle corn. Oh my goodness. The avocado corn is so good. And then, you know, because you can smell that from pretty much anywhere in the park. And you don't even Except have to eat. Like midway. Absolutely, you don't even have to eat it. And you like that smell too, right, bud? Yeah. It is a great thing. And just smelling it uh, doesn't add as many calories as actually eating it. So <laughs> that is fine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. You're probably saving yourself about 200 calories per kernel of pop popcorn. Right. Not even right. mouthful uh, <laughs> kernel, right? right. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, like, it's one of the takeaways that I get from Hershey Park besides the chocolate. Um, it's just their history. Yep. Like, how they've kept the, you know, the traditions alive that Milton Hershey um, has brought on with the Hershey School and how it just runs its solely donations, provides free education for people. And then, you know, the park itself, which started out as, like, a recreational area for the employees and mm -hmm. then grew into what it is today. Yep. And then just the tradition of that. And speaking of Milton Hershey, I actually met a great relative of Milton Hershey. Oh, wow. Two days ago. Oh, that recently? And okay. Yeah, two days ago. I was like, wow, this is really cool. And uh, it was really fun talking about it. So they, they actually share a bloodline with them, and their last name is Hershey. So I thought that was actually really cool about that. So... I just wanted to share those. Oh, having those connections are pretty wild, especially to a place that's that important to you. So that is awesome. Exactly, yeah. Well, so take us through the steps then, how you then got this connection to this very special coaster to you that you can introduce here. <laughs> All right, so that very special coaster is one that I first rode in 2004. Okay. Actually, with my aunt, who at the time was 75. Oh my gosh, that's great. So, that was my very first ride on Lightning Racer. Lightning Racer. That's correct, yeah. And um, she actually was the one that got me started on marathoning because ah. she, she remembers riding the Comet when it was brown instead of white. Oh, I didn't even know that it was. Okay. Yeah, if you look at some really old pictures, she remembers going there and riding the Comet for hours. Hours and hours and hours. What? We were talking about it. I just sat there enraptured by this. And it kind of made me want to go, hey, how can I make my mark in the family? Because my entire family is full of coaster marathoners. Oh my God. So it's in the bloodline. That's fascinating. It's in the bloodline. I didn't know this. Oh my gosh. So this is a great reason for you to be a marathoner. I love it. Exactly. And it kind of, for me, you know, that first ride, I was actually scared because I didn't know, you know, what to expect. We sat in the middle yep. because, you know, my aunt was like, hey, you got to sit in the middle, ride lightning. Lightning is my personal favorite and you will learn to love it too. And I was like, okay, okay. I got on set, loved it. I, you know, because Lightning Racer is such a great coaster, it doesn't give you the same ride twice. Yeah. You can't get the same ride the exact same time. Even the time of day, you start in the morning and it runs a little sluggish because the track hasn't warmed up. Right. You're by yourself. I remember days of me getting there nice, bright, and early, being the first one at the rope drop. Of course. <laughs> to speed walk my way through my little shortcut through the boardwalk all the way back to Lightning Racer, going up that ramp, and everybody knew me over there. So, I would be there, that rope drop would, would drop literally at 10, I'd be there by 10.03. Oh, I and could believe it. Literally like a half mile walk. Oh my gosh. Dedication, I love it. Burned my calories. Right. So at 75, she was still riding a ton, she still loved it and rode as much mm -hmm. as she could? Yep. Oh, that's yep. so great. She still rides today. Oh, and she uh, still... Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I was actually really proud of her that she did that. She actually went up to Hershey on her birthday and rode. 
Ugh. with me and I was like, wow, you man, you're gonna be part of this coaster when you go eventually, you will. Oh, I know it. That's brilliant, I love that story. How many rides are you up to now? <laughs> Funny that you should ask that, I'm kind of currently up to 3,000, that's three, zero, 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 rise on Lightning Racer. So at the end of last season, was that intentional to end at that huge round number? Yes. I hate odd numbers. Of course, your friends and family will know this, but I think a lot of others don't. You use a very interesting methodology to actually count your rides, as opposed to you have a feeling some people just kind of throw a nebulous, yeah, I think I'm around 300. Tell us what you do to actually count your rides. So what I've started doing is I've actually started using a clicker counter, mm -hmm. which that is a classic sick. method of keeping track of, let's say, how many people enter an auditorium to keep track of attendance. Yes. You see sometimes ushers standing there with a little silver device in their hand that clicks if you push a button. And that click is actually a number. And I'll actually have that in my pocket as I'm on the ride or kind of looped around my finger. And as I'm riding, as I'm sitting there, you know, as soon as I get back in the station, click, that's one. Right. Um, and I'll do it again and again and again. So that's how I keep track of all my rides. And speaking of again and again and again in all those rides, I actually always wonder if you actually dream of the layout. You've done it so many times by now. I wonder if you actually, whether it's even laying down and trying to fall asleep or actually have dreams of thinking of every single turn because of how well you know it. Ironically enough, as you say that, I huh. actually can do that. I can actually close my eyes and then count exactly when an element happens, how it happens, and I can literally almost, this is gonna sound kind of weird, I can actually feel it almost, and. I've actually videotaped myself when I do this, and believe it or not, I actually lean a little bit <laughs> side <laughs> to side. I could believe it. And it's actually kind of weird, but I think it's kind of cool to know that I've memorized that the layouts of both sides. Like I memorized so well. El Toro. You feel the same way about El Toro, although I think you're a little short of that 3,000 mark by about. 2,940, maybe something like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> but so he's done El Toro more than any other, uh, and I would guess you've done it around 60 times would be my guess. I'd say 100. You think 100, I don't know, it's possible. You don't have your clicker, that's the problem. You need a clicker. <laughs> and we can't start counting now, so. Oh, you can, we can approximate and then go from there, but do you want, you, you want to You can start counting whenever you want to. Exactly, you can start at one now, you never know. Does the experience ever get old? No, see, and that's the question that I get asked a lot. Does it ever get old? Does it ever just like rub off on you or do you ever get bored while you're on it? The answer is no. Because to me, whenever I get on that ride, whenever I just leave the station and start going up that lift hill, I just feel all my problems just go away. Yes. Because you can cry if you want to, you can scream if you want to, you can throw your hands up if you want to. If I'm by myself in the front row, I spread my arms out as we're falling down the lift hill, as we're falling down that first drop. I feel as though flying. It's when, you know, you're it's a judgment free zone. Who's going to judge you when you're on a roller coaster for oh. trying out that? Oh, that's brilliant. So for you, it's kind of like an escapism. It's like a therapy. You get on that ride and you are in the moment. You are just enjoying every single thing. You're not thinking about bills. You're not thinking about work. You're not nope. thinking about anything else. You're just loving that moment. Like there was a time where I was on it and there was a, it was, the sun was starting to set and it actually sets behind the main gate. So you can actually start seeing the sunset like beyond where Fahrenheit is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get some really good really Fahrenheit shots from there. But there was a time where it was mid-afternoon and it was a perfectly clear blue sky. It was warm. I was the only one on that train. I was the only one on Lightning and there was one person on Thunder. I was sitting in the front of Lightning and I just spread my arms out and I was like, I was just saying repeatedly over and over, this is beautiful. This is what I live for. This is what riding a roller coaster is all about. And I could just feel the air in my fingers like I could touch it it was just like almost like an out-of-body experience I, I can't really describe how it felt what a beautiful moment and all those sensations it's the feel of the air the sights as you said the smells there's so mm -hmm. many different things involved 
And with a wooden coaster, since wood is a former living product and it changes, expands, you do, as you said, get a different experience. That's, I think, one of those differences between wood and steel, that with a wooden coaster, that you do have those different experiences. And because of that, overall, would you say you mm -hmm. like wooden coasters better than steel? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> better believe I pay attention to that wooden coaster category in the GTAs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I could definitely see that. And so we know your love of Lightning Racer is more than just I like to ride it. And I know you've done some special things kind of in tribute to the coaster, including making, designing some things. Can you let our audience know a little bit about some of those things that you've done? Sure. I have actually have a piece of wood that I've got that I kind of wear all the time. People have kind of noticed that. It's a really tiny piece of wood, and I also have something else that I'll share as well. It's a, It started out as probably like a 4 by 4 piece of wood that I got laser cut down into the shape of a lightning bolt. Yep. And then I actually put reflective tape, I put yellow reflective tape over one side of the lightning bolt. So that way, and it's been on every single ride, starting from, I think, around a thousand. Okay, so last 2000, it's been with you, nice. It's been on every single ride. I wear it every single day I go to the parks because it just reminds me of what I do. And I put some reflective tape on there because when I go through the tunnel and the camera flash goes, goes off, it looks like an actual lightning bolt that's kind of just there. And I've actually got some really good pictures of that. Oh, so and cool. And I've also done, I've also gotten some great photography of it. And then I have some friends in high places over at Hershey who've uh -huh. been super nice to me and given me behind the scenes tours of the ride. And even I've gotten the side of a train car from the ride as well. Oh, that's so cool. That is great. Uh, Unfortunately, it's thunder, but I'm not complaining. Hey, because you'll take what you can get. <laughs> I will definitely take what I can get. I got off and collected some memorabilia as well as like some rare t-shirts too. Did you actually design a logo as well? I did, yeah. And I forget, was that handmade or did you do that on computers? I started out as a doodle into my sketch pad and then kind of just turned into a full-fledged logo that I kind of want to put on a t-shirt. I kind of wear it. It's like a Hershey Park racing team, and then it says Lightning Racer, and then it says like Thunder and Lightning. Oh, that would be um, so cool. You've got to yeah. make the t shirt, definitely. I should. <laughs> I should, actually. Oh, that's great. What do the write ups say to you since you know them so well? <laughs> they say, like, hello, Brianna. Why are you here? When are you going to go home? <laughs> <laughs> they must feel like you're part of the team by now. Yeah, yeah. I always get greeted, I always say hello, you know, they always let me do things that technically I shouldn't try to do. I mean, like, one of them literally took my sunglasses off. I was tired. We were leaving the station, one of them just yanked my sunglasses off my face. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> we, we do some goofy things. Um, like, for instance, when I got my 2500th ride, I got an announcement through the ride loudspeakers, which are actually located all along the track. Oh, that's so great. So everybody could hear my voice. Not just on lightning side, on thunder side. Everybody could hear that. Oh, that's a really great and, moment. That's so really nice of them to do it. The station, et cetera. You know, I'd see, it's really funny. If somebody would see me away from lightning racer, that I was part of the lightning racer ride ops team in general. Right. They'd say, are you lost? <laughs> Get back on your ride. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So it's the things like that that make me laugh. And, you know, that that's why also why I keep coming back because, you know, they're kind of like my second family, to be honest. Oh, that's great. And it shows how special that park is to take that time to do those kind of things. So that's really great of them to do it. What do you think about the future of Lightning Racer in terms of its lifetime and potentially what might be done to it? I'm sure those are things that you've thought of, perhaps maybe even talked to people, but what do you think about the future of the ride? I believe that it will remain at Hershey Park for, for decades. Really don't see it going anywhere. It is one of Hershey Park's prize attractions along with Sky Rush, which is another one of my personal favorites as well. And I think you've ridden that a few times, haven't you? A bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. I think it's up there in the thousands by this point, but I've lost track at this point. So it's not one of my major things that I keep track of. Right. But um, what I can say about Lightning Racer is that Hershey has done a really good job of keeping it in tip-top shape, replacing track where they need to, maintenance where it has to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, they just posted pictures, I believe, a couple weeks ago 
online of them actually repairing track on Thunderside. They are keeping they they keep they keep care of their wind coasters so well in the off season that it's absolutely insane. But like before all their steel coasters showed up, people would go to Hershey Park and rave about the lumber. They wouldn't rave about the steel, they would rave about the lumber, the wood, the wood coasters. Because you have an excellent one, two to three lineup of stellar wooden coasters. You've combined Wildcat and Lightning Racer. And I think they get short shifted a little bit. All the time you hear about the battle between Holiday World and Kings Island in terms of wood supremacy. And I don't take mm -hmm. anything away from both those parks. I love the wooden coasters in both those parks, especially Holiday World. But I think Hershey deserves to be in that conversation of great wooden coaster parks. I 100% agree with you. Uh, Hershey Park and GCI teamed up to create, I believe, one of the most underrated coasters of all time. Because Hershey is technically, I would say, still considered technically a small park. But now it's not going to be because they just have this giant expansion going on. Even with that being said, you know, they're, they're consistently overlooked. Like Stormrunner is consistently overlooked. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So Lightning Racer is consistently overlooked because... Yeah, it's a racing coaster, but what else does it do? You know, I'm competitive. It's all fudge. It's a but great point. Why I love it. Definitely deserves that respect. And with that, since you do ride Lightning Racer so much, and talking about some of those other rides, you still feel like you have enough time in the park to do all those other rides you love throughout the year? I do, actually. Okay. And what's really funny is that I actually have a nice little schedule for myself. Uh, when I go to the park, I know it sounds kind of OCD. But I'll literally go to the park where I'm staying there all day. I'll go to the park, I'll ride Lightning Racer for as many times as I can up until like Eat lunch. three, four o'clock. Yep, yep. I'll take, I'll take like 10 minutes for lunch, grab a hot dog or something, and water, et cetera, eat it, go right back on. I ride it until like three, four o'clock. And the reason I say that is because that's when all the crowds realize that, hey, there's a back to this park. You know, there are rides back there. All right. So, you know, that's when all the crowds start showing up. That when it, That's when it gets really hard to marathon a lot because you keep having to get off and get back on. But I'll do that if necessary. So that's when I'll go and get on all the big coasters that are closer to the front of the park that always suck the crowds in at, during the beginning of the day as opposed to later in the day. Well, Andrew, do you know what I just heard? What? I think I just heard a tip of the day right there. What? Going to Hershey, of uh, when to do what coasters first. So you start out with the coasters in the, the back. back. Then go uh, to the front. Exactly. So Laugh Tracks and Wildcat and Lightning yep. Racer. And then later in the day, when people start moving that way, you head the other way and hit Sky Rush and Comet and Super Duper Looper. I think that sounds like a great tip of the day. That's absolutely correct. That was totally intentional. I love that segue. So I think in there we just put Alex singing his tip of the day song. Thank you for that, Brianna. We've taken care of two birds with one stone. I love it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm really glad I could help. Oh, that is great. Well, Brianna, thanks so much for sharing your story. And I think 2019 has to be the year where Andrew, Alex, and I get a ride on Lightning Racer with you. That will be it. And 2019 will be the year that I hit... 4,000. Oh my gosh, so maybe that could be the time to do it. I mean, what better moment to ride Lightning Race with you than number 4,000? Can you give us an approximate month? Let's see. I know you have this so well planned out. 4,000 would be around what month? If I ride at least, let's say, 50 to 100 times per day, which mm. I regularly do, Yep. I could approximate, roughly get there probably around July. Okay, <laughs> roughly. We, I'm sure we can plan a trip there around July when school is out for us, so that would work uh, pretty well. What do you think, bud? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Number 4,000. All right. Well, uh, it's so great to finally have you on Brianna the Theme Park Families, and we look forward to seeing you in the Thank parks. You. Thank you so much. Oh, our <laughs> pleasure. All right, so that was very cool. I loved hearing about the family connection, and I think that's what we're going to see in these series of interviews, that different people have very different reasons for marathoning a coaster. And for yeah. her, it was family, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, 
That's very interesting. And it was great to hear from her. And I'm sure at some point down the road as our podcast is going for the next 12, 15, 18 years, we'll be talking to Brianna again. So thanks so much for sharing with us. We're going to be putting out another episode here pretty soon. And we've got lots more from this series of these enthusiasts really love their coasters. So thanks for checking in for this or mini-sode. And we'll have some more for you really soon. See you later. Bye.